Far beneath the waves, at the bottom of the ocean, China is digging deeper than anyone has dared before. In a place of crushing pressure and eternal darkness, machines are drilling into a world almost no one has ever seen. What they're pulling from the seabed could reshape everything we thought we knew about our planet. But what lies hidden under miles of water and stone? Why has this discovery remained so secretive? And why are scientists calling it one of the most significant finds of our time? The answers could unleash consequences we're not ready to face. This is the story of a mission at the edge of human technology and the secrets waiting in the darkest depths of the Earth. The Mariana Trench is the deepest known part of the world's oceans, a chasm so vast and remote that reaching its bottom means descending nearly 36,000 feet. Down there lies the Challenger Deep, the deepest point on Earth, where pressure exceeds 1,000 bar, equivalent to the weight of 100 elephants pressing on a single human skull. It's cold, lightless, and crushing. In short, it's one of the most inhospitable places imaginable. Yet humans keep going back. In recent years, China has led several missions into the abyss, pushing technological boundaries in the process. On the surface, these missions seem purely scientific, studying rare species, measuring extreme environmental variables, and collecting geological samples. But beneath that, there's something much bigger brewing. China is not just diving for knowledge. It's diving for survival. China currently leads the world in green energy manufacturing. It's the number one producer of solar panels, wind turbines, and electric vehicles. It's also the biggest consumer of many key resources that make all this possible. Natural gas, cobalt, nickel, copper, and rare earth elements. But there's a problem. The country's demand for these resources is rapidly outpacing supply. By 2025, China's domestic natural gas consumption is projected to reach 16 trillion cubic feet, while local production can only cover 9 trillion. That leaves a 7 trillion cubic foot gap Beijing has to fill through imports. Yet deliveries of liquefied natural gas, LNG, are already falling, down 22% compared to last year. Any delay or disruption sends ripples through China's energy markets and weakens its path toward carbon neutrality. Cobalt is another pain point. China imports almost all of it from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. When a three-month export ban hit in 2025, prices shot up 50%, exposing China's over-reliance on a single supplier. Nickel poses a similar dilemma. Despite China's industrial dominance, it lacks domestic ore. Global price swings and political instability in supplier nations make planning nearly impossible. Copper is just as critical. In May 2025, China's smelters took in a record 3 million tons of copper concentrate, yet it barely eased demand. Treatment charges turned negative, and processors began fiercely competing for every pound. At the same time, a rare Earth's bottleneck is emerging as conflict in northern Myanmar shut down key mining operations, having Chinese imports. In short, China is cornered desperately needing resources to maintain its technological and green energy dominance, but dependent on unstable supply chains. Which brings us back to the oceans. The depths of Earth's oceans may look barren, but they're hiding something powerful. At extreme depths like the Mariana Trench, under cold temperatures and immense pressure, methane leaking from the seabed bonds with water to form methane hydrate, better known as fire ice. It looks like ice, but burns like natural gas. Fire ice is incredibly energy dense. A single cubic foot of it can release six times its volume in methane gas. Even better, it's relatively clean. When burned, it emits half as much CO2 as coal and produces no ash. For a country pushing to reach carbon neutrality by 2060, this could be a game changer. Then there are polymetallic nodules, rocky lumps scattered across the seafloor, that resemble potatoes, but are actually layered composites of metals. Each ton of these nodules can contain up to 35 pounds of nickel, 19 pounds of copper, and 13 pounds of cobalt. And they're everywhere. Scientists estimate more than 300 billion tons 
lie dormant beneath the waves. For China, the implications are massive. This isn't just about solving a supply crunch. It's about securing the raw materials to lead the next century of technological progress. The only challenge? Getting to them. Mining the ocean floor is no easy task. These resources lie in pitch black, freezing environments under pressures that can crush steel. Human divers can't operate there, but autonomous machines can. China has invested heavily in developing a fleet of deep sea vehicles. The Zhaolong 2 was one of the first to break serious ground, or rather water. Capable of diving to 14,700 feet, it boasts a full suite of sensors and imaging tools. It operated continuously for over 31 hours and laid the groundwork for future unmanned exploration. Its successor, Zhaolong 3, pushed those boundaries further with longer endurance and smarter navigation, completing a record 96-mile underwater trip at nearly 13,000 feet. Then came the Shenhai Yangshi series, autonomous vehicles capable of diving nearly 20,000 feet without direct human control. Operators sit on shore while the vehicle uses cameras and sensors to map, analyze, and perform precise tasks on the seabed. The Haiyan series, deep sea gliders, add another layer. They move slowly and efficiently, collecting data over long durations. In 2017, one reached 20,700 feet in the Mariana Trench, setting a world record for glider depth and confirming China's ability to observe the trench over extended periods. In July 2024, China made a leap from observation to action. Researchers at Shanghai Tech University tested Kai-2-2, a prototype mining drone that retrieved polymetallic nodules from 13,450 feet. It maneuvered across steep slopes, sticky sediment, and shifting terrain, all without human intervention. It introduced innovations in metal collection, hoisting systems, and smart terrain sensing making it one of the most advanced underwater mining systems ever developed. China's offshore oil sector is contributing too. A new deep sea robotic arm, dubbed the Chilean arm, has been tested and deployed to perform delicate operations like drilling and sample collection with surgical precision. And soon, these machines may descend even deeper. The goal, fully autonomous extraction at 23,000 feet. To support this effort, China launched a groundbreaking project in February 2025, the Cold Seep Ecosystem Research Center. It's the first integrated land-sea facility designed to study methane seeps and associated ecosystems where gases leak out of the seabed. Based in Guangzhou and led by the Chinese Academy of Sciences, the center is scheduled for completion in five years and consists of three core components a deep-sea laboratory that will be stationed 6,500 feet below the surface. It can support six researchers for up to a month, enabling real-time fieldwork, a land-based simulation facility, replicating seabed conditions to test how organisms and chemical reactions behave under different variables, a robust support infrastructure that ensures seamless communication, logistics, power, and data transfer between sea and land systems. Together, these components will allow scientists to run parallel simulations, tweak environmental conditions, and observe real-time ecological changes. This is vital for studying methane-eating bacteria, gas hydrate stability, and the carbon cycle, all critical to understanding how ocean ecosystems work and how resource extraction could affect them. But while the economic potential is enormous, the ecological cost could be just as high. Collecting polymetallic nodules involves scraping the ocean floor, removing the top sediment layer where many species live and feed. This disrupts habitats and food chains. Worse, the process stirs up massive clouds of sediment that can travel for miles, clogging the filtering systems of corals, sponges, and mollusks. The machinery itself is also a problem. Constant noise and vibration from underwater vehicles can interfere with deep sea species that rely on sound for navigation and communication, causing stress and disorientation. During lifting and onboard processing, waste plumes containing heavy metals like lead and cadmium can contaminate the water column. These pollutants affect plankton and small marine animals, working their way up the food chain and threatening larger predators. And then there's the carbon cycle. Deep sea sediments are massive carbon sinks 
storing organic material for millions of years. Disturbing them could release that carbon, weakening the ocean's ability to absorb atmospheric CO2 and worsening global warming. Recovery, if it happens at all, is glacial. Studies from mining tests conducted decades ago show that deep sea ecosystems struggle to bounce back. In some areas, little to no recovery was seen even 30 years later. Fire ice extraction poses its own hazards. Drilling into methane hydrate layers can destabilize seabed sediments, triggering underwater landslides and even tsunamis. There's also the risk of uncontrolled methane release, which is both a safety risk and a greenhouse gas nightmare. Methane is over 25 times more potent than CO2 in trapping heat. Chemical leaks from extraction sites, such as hydrogen sulfide and heavy metals, could also poison marine life and disrupt ecosystems that took millions of years to evolve. And most critically, disturbing fire ice deposits could alter how the ocean acts as a natural carbon filter. If that function weakens, global carbon levels could spike. China's drive to tap the Mariana Trench is both bold and risky. On one hand, it promises a solution to the country's resource bottlenecks and a pathway to green energy independence. On the other, it could irreversibly damage ecosystems that science is only beginning to understand. The key will be balance. If China can pair technological innovation with environmental responsibility through rigorous monitoring, global cooperation, and careful limits on extraction, it may succeed in charting a new path for resource security. If not, the depths that promise salvation today may become a scar on the planet tomorrow.